XML is a tool. You can use XML to do just about anything you want, but there are a number of standard uses of XML that um, I want to go over with you and then focus in on the one that we're going to use XML for. The first of the standard uses of XML, and probably the biggest actually, the one that it's used most frequently for and, and maybe the most, the most information is in XML for this purpose, is data transfer. So the idea is I have a database over here, you have a database over there, I need to get some data from my database to your database. How will I do that? Well, in the olden days, uh, I would just say to you, well, I'll put out all of my data from my database in this form. I'd give you a whole list of the, of the tables and the fields, and um, you just figure out how to get it back into your database. That was kind of cumbersome and difficult, and especially if there were many different databases, you would have to create a point-to-point -point data transfer from every database to every other database. XML serves as a central point, the place where all the databases come in, they all go to the common XML format, and then they can all go out. So if I'm a provider of data, all I have to do is make sure that I can get my data out of my database into our common agreed to XML format, and if I'm an importer of data, all I have to do is figure out how to get the information from the common, the, from the common format into my database format. So that cuts the job down enormously and it means that people can share large volumes of data without being at all aware of where it came from because it all comes into that one central form, that one central structure, and from that structure as a database administrator I just have to worry about getting it from the structure that I know very well into my database and I don't have to know anything about the databases where it came from. So that's use number one is a data transfer protocol. Uh, use number two, and you're likely to see this um, uh, if you ever browse through the folders that are part of an application that you might use, and probably I would say most applications these days uh, do this, and that is to put their configuration information in XML files. So XML is a convenient place to store things like uh, what color should the screen be, and uh, how many buttons should I put on the screen, and how did you decide to lay the screen out, and uh, what's your username, and what's your... Uh, uh, what's the last uh, page you visited? All those kinds of things that are configuration or parameters that set up an application, that's often put into XML. So that's a use of XML that you'll see. You'll often see if, as you browse around your hard drive something that says .xml, you open it up and lo and behold it's configuration information. It's kind of nice because the configuration information is really easy to read if it's in XML because it has, it has verbose tags in it and you can more or less understand what each of those tags is and you can even try editing the file in a text editor and, and, uh, and probably you'll have success with that. So that's use number two. Use number one was data transfer. Use number two is configuration. Use number three is what's called in the business is serialization, but it's much simpler than that. It's just storing all the data from my application. So when I have an application and it's running, there's all sorts of data inside that application. And when I terminate the application or when I finish the application, I have to save all that somewhere. And XML is a place where it's often saved. So that's a minor use from our consideration. You'll probably never see a file like that, but if you ever hear somebody talking about serialization using XML, that's what they're talking about, storing application data. Okay, the next one is a really big one. The next one is, uh, is one that you will hopefully actually study yourselves. And that's the use of XML for the semantic web or you might more generally say for resource location. So things like Dublin Core, things like semantic web applications, topic maps, RDF, all of those kind of things all use XML as their way of expressing their concepts. So the, these technologies, ontologies and RDF and topic maps and Dublin Core, they don't need XML, but XML is usually the tool that's used in order to store the information about those things. So for example, in Dublin Core, we have a, uh, we have a, a record, and that's the record of all the key or the minimal set of data or of metadata attributes that, it, that you need to tag uh, a, a resource on the web with. That's not XML per se, but XML is usually used as the way that that's carried out. So good skills, which you'll get in this course, for XML will take you a long way in understanding the, uh, the, the ways that data is, or the ways that, that information is represented in semantic web technologies. But I will give you a bit of a caution. By and large, in this course, we're gonna stay away from namespaces and we're gonna stay away from sophisticated, sort of very, uh, 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 very 
unverbose ways of representing information. When you see a tag in this course, you'll pretty much be able to read it and understand what it is. When you see a tag in this course, you'll pretty much be able to assume that it's coming all from one namespace and furthermore that we invented that namespace. As you get into semantic web tagging, you'll see that there's namespaces all over the place and you really have to learn a lot about namespaces in order to make that work. You'll also see that tag names sometimes are rather, relatively obscure and they sometimes use that shortened kind of program notation where you just have two or three letters and you're left to guess what that, what that tag actually means. Okay, so those are the uses that we're not going to play with much, although that final use I hope that you do explore um, after this course. And the final one that we will use XML for, the reason that we're studying XML, is to model information. XML is a language, XML is a tool that will allow us to discover, encode, represent, display, work with, tease apart, create web pages out of the information structure that we decide upon. So XML is a very good tool for information, uh, information modeling and that's the way that we're going to use it.